three, two, one, time for art class. Today, you'll need a ruler, a pencil, and some crayons for our art lesson. Start by getting your paper ready and holding it nice and tall. If you don't have a ruler, you can use the edge of anything that's straight, like a folder or a book or something with a straight line. We're going to start our picture by drawing two lines that go all the way from the top to the bottom of the page. You want to start a little bit to the left of your paper and make sure you're holding down your ruler really tight. See how that's not quite in the center? That's what we want. We're basically making two lines that are going to create a tree. Our picture today is a snake wrapped around a tree. It's an illustration drawing. See how my line goes down the middle of the page? You can pause if you need to. Please pause as many times as you need to during this video so that you can stay drawing along with me. Our snake is going to wrap from the left side to the right side of the page. So you're going to start with a curved line that goes across the tree and a little bit down. Next, I want you to curve the line over and back so it appears that the line is going across and then behind the tree. Remember, you can pause this video if you need to and when you need to. The next step is we're going to imagine a line that connects going down and curves out from the other side. If you want to draw the line across the tree, you can do it really lightly and erase it later. Next, the line is going to continue across the bottom. So it's like a pattern. We're going to do another line that goes across the tree, curves a little bit over. I think I had to fix my line here. And it's okay if you have to erase. It's okay if you have to fix your lines while you're drawing. I used to think that if you had to erase, it meant you were a bad artist, but it really means that you're a great artist. The next step is to erase the two straight lines of the tree. There we go. Now it looks like we're starting to form a snake's body going across the tree. I'm going back and fixing my line a little bit. You might need to do that a couple of times while you're working today, and that's okay. Remember, pause the video as many times as you need. So I'm erasing and fixing my lines. Now you can see that we have the body of the snake starting to form across the tree and wrapping behind the tree. Imagining that the body continues behind the tree here and then connecting the curved line on the left side of the tree. There we go, looking good. Kind of looks like a backwards S. Then we're going to go across the tree and the tail is going to get nice and thin at the end. Those two little lines, we're going to erase those just like at the top of our page. As you erase, you can brush your eraser dust off, check your image and see how it's starting to look. At the top of the snake, we're going to figure out what we're going to do for the snake's face. If you want to make the mouth open or closed. I've decided to make mine open just for fun. Now at first, I drew the mouth and it kind of looked like a crocodile or an alligator. So I wanted to go back and fix it because I made the nose kind of bumping up a little too much. You can make yours how you like. This drawing is called an illustration, and it's what a lot of illustrators do when they make a children's book. So they draw a cartoon-like character that isn't exactly realistic, and it has some fun and interesting parts that are creative. What I'm doing here is fixing the front of the face, 
and I'm adding a little oval for this next nose. Some pointed teeth at the front of the mouth. And then I decided to add a tongue with a little triangle at the end so that it's forming what's called a forked is interesting because the diamonds are going to continue on what seems like the bottom of the snake, but then as you turn the page, it actually ends up being the top part of the bottom once again. Continue your pattern down, fixing it as you go until you reach the end of the page. towards the end of the tail, like this. Kind of looks like a beehive. Then I decided to do a little V shape in the middle of each one to make it look a little bit more detailed. Kind of like a real rattlesnake's tail. I took my eraser and did some fine detail erasing just to get rid of that original tail line that was in there. You can make little changes as you go. There, that looks good. Next, I decided to put some details around the snake's mouth. It's up to you. Some kids might not like the way this looks. I thought it was interesting because I was looking at some real pictures of snakes and I thought that my snake's face looked a little bit plain. So I did some ovals around the mouth. I colored in the oval of the eye with my pencil. And then I added some ovals around the reptile snake's eye. I've drawn reptile eyes before and I know that they usually look something like this. It's up to you though, if you wanted to make it a different detail. Then I decided to get a little fancy and draw some wiggling lines down the snake's back. I thought it looked pretty interesting and then I'll have more areas to add different colors and details when I'm adding color to my picture. There, that looks good. When I was in third grade, my art teacher showed me this really cool book about an illustrator who would add these little lines to show movement and motion. And I wanted it to look like my snake's tail was moving and rattling, so I added some lines. They kind of look like parentheses at the tail. Next, I added some texture to my tree to make it look like it has tree bark. So this might be a little complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. I drew wiggling lines that kind of look like letter V's or just lines going up and down my tree. As long as your lines don't touch or cross, your texture will look like a tree and it will look pretty, pretty detailed at the end. Now I'm going to draw a secret opening in my tree. You can add your opening at the edge or in the middle. I made mine at the edge 
because I think it would be a little more unexpected and kind of like what a real artist would do. I made it pointed at the top and the bottom like it's a real split. Now inside, you can add whatever secret detail you want. Could be owl, could be creepy spooky eyes peeking out. I decided that I'm going to add a nest with some eggs, like the snake is hunting the eggs and it's about to get them pretty cool detail here next i'm going to add some tree branches where i just do two lines coming out and they split and go to a point i also decided to do another tree branch towards the top of the page Now it's time to add the fun details. Here's my nest. I kind of started shading it in. And then I'm going to add some leaves and I'm gonna get my crayons ready because it's time to add some color to the picture. Here we go. Adding color is fun. What I did with my crayons is I outlined over the details and then colored lighter in between. That's a little trick I learned when I was younger. I decided to make my snake purple and rainbow because why not? It would be bright and really stand out against the tree, which is probably not realistic for nature, but I wanted it to be a fun and interesting illustration. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cool. I like the way the snake wrapped around a tree looks and I can't wait to see yours. 